Okay, people, welcome back. I just realized I still have my phone in my pocket. Silence. Welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and mm, there's quite a few high profile licenses this week. We got some Star Wars, we got some Marvel, we got some DC, we got some Masters of the Universe, we got some Godzilla, but nothing really too outrageous. Well, okay, Mattel doing some PR work for Masters of the Universe. You're getting better. Well, then uh, there's a monstrous rose with several sets of very sharp teeth that, that I'm interested in, even though I have no attachment to Godzilla. But for the rest, it just seems kind of business as usual. I hate to say that, but I think I have some reasoning behind that just coming out of my mouth. We'll save that for the end. First, as promised, the Rascally Plunderlings crew kicked off their Plunder Long and Plunder Strong campaign this week, and it's already well on its way to getting funded. In the Raider category, there's Ace and Blitz. For Berserkers, we have Pike and Mango, and then the captains are Ojo and Blackjack. Now, we all know that body reuse is a pretty traditional toy production practice at this point. I mean, that's just the name of the game. But I, I, it still blows my mind when I can look at a line like this and see how each individual looks so different with just a color swap or different overlays, different accessories, changes the whole personality for each character. The Raiders have a little bit of rowdiness to them. You can see it, look at them. Just and the Berserkers, all business. They're gonna come at you, get it done, go home, eat. And then the Captains, I don't know if it's the, the dress or the expressions or what, they just have an air of authority to them. Then like the plunderlings, each plunder strong and plunder long have a corresponding hatchling that matches their skin tone. So you can take the extra heads, the extra hands, put it on this little body and keep them on display. You don't just throw them in a Ziploc bag and get lose them in a box of accessories that just keeps piling up and up and you don't know what to do with all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's my accessory box over there. But that's just the beginning. There's silhouette teases for stretch goals like Drench, Nomad, Feral, and more accessories. We gotta hit 200k for that Drench Plunder Puss. It has been confirmed that the skin tones here will match back to the Plunderlings. So if you're into color coordination in your display, I got you covered. If you are interested in the long, the strong, you're down to get your plunder on. Is <laughs> two Mix-a-Lot references in the span of a month too much? Hell no. If you are interested, Link is in the description. Speaking of Kickstarters close to funding, the Loose Collector, the Crypt Monster Hide, is almost funded with six days to go. If you like a lot of beef in your action figure, this is right up your alley. Like I said, when the campaign started, this'll work as just, well, if you want Hide on your shelf, here you go. If you just want a big bulky bruiser to go along with your action figures, here you go. If you're needing a muscled up base body for a custom you're working on, here you go. And in case you missed it, Dave did update the base body, adding texture to the smooth joints. That way it's not, well, it wasn't breaking it. We're talking about action figures here, but the flow of the sculpt, it's now much more even flow. Thoughts are rough like butter. The gag's gonna get old really quick. If you are at all down for a toy that doubles as a home defense weapon, then head over there, throw down your hard earned money, get yourself a big hunkle plastic. Oh, but we ain't done with Kickstarter yet, or Loose Collector for that matter. There is a Coffin Comics Lady Death campaign going on right now that is more than funded. The goal was $15,000 for a Lady Death comic. The last time I looked, it was sitting at 450 k So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's funded. So that gets you Lady Death comics and alternate covers and holofoils and special editions and trading cards and t-shirts and it's like the 90s in crowdfund form but this is the foosh baby you know what we're looking for that mm, sweet sweet plastic i had to scroll way down the page too this kickstarter has a lot going on but i eventually found the kickstarter exclusive scarlet edition of the executive replicas loose collector lady death we've already seen this in the black costume this one's in red hence you know scarlet I'm gonna save you some time. It's available at the $90 tier and it's limited to 666 pieces. Of course it is. I don't remember this character in this color costume, but I don't know, I kind of like it. Now, in my head, she's wearing black, but I like the, I don't know, the white and the red just plays off each other really well. Last time I looked, there's 20 some odd days left. Head over there if you like your lady in red. <laughs> lady in red. Another week 
another round of McFarlane DC Multiverse news. Although in the case of Grifter, we had already seen the initial reveal last week, this week's all solicitation means pretty promotional pictures. Just a better look at what we're getting, and I hate to say it, fellas, but I think I'm actually preferring the modern look over that 90s big trench coat thing. I know! <laughs> Put your pitchforks away! Get your fingers away from the keyboard. Stop it! And surprisingly, I did a little bit of research on Infinite Frontier because I didn't want to say modern rendition not knowing that it came out like 10, 15 years ago or something. Googling the first picture that comes up was this. Grifter with a knife. <laughs> Son of bitches. And then not even scrolling the page, there's another with a knife. And then him with a sword on his back. Sure, there's guns there, but there's also knives. So last week when I was like, Grifter don't use bladed weapons. <laughs> I was wrong, but we should still get guns with Grifter because it's Grifter. And I know it's not McFarlane's fault. He has to work under the restrictions handed down to him. Again, at least there's trigger fingers so we can put our own guns in the hands. Then there was the Hush, Batman, and Hush 2-pack. Is that right? The storyline's called Hush, Hush, Batman, and Hush 2-pack. You know what I'm talking about. This was met with mixed emotions. First off, there is Hush, who was just revealed last week in a regular release. This time around, he's got about 80% more pie hole. He also has brown gloves, which I guess is more accurate to the storyline. I didn't even realize last week's reveal had the purple medical gloves, which kind of pop. I don't know, you put purple on a DC villain and I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. And then for Batman, the Hush version is what a lot of people were waiting for and it doesn't quite capture that Jim Lee flavor. It's still a good looking Batman for the McFarlane line, but there's the open mouth, and then what the hell is going on with those arms? If we look at the all seeing, all knowing trading card of the prototype or digital render, whichever it may be, the top of the arm and the elbow joint is supposed to be painted gray. Looks like this was missed at the factory. Wouldn't it make more sense to cast the whole thing in gray and then paint the black? Although the spikes may be rubbery and may not take paint as well as... That's manufacturing process. As is, it's just something was missed. That's all we can say. Hopefully it gets fixed before shipping out, but if not, the most we can hope for is a single-carded blue version down the road with a closed mouth, correct arms. I keep doing this. We're talking about arms. Look at this. Yeah. But the newest reveal this week is Red Robin. Fight it. Don't do it. Stop. You're better than that. I was on my way out of reading comics about the time New 52 hit, so I'm familiar with this costume, but it is definitely not my favorite. Don't get me wrong, I like the costume, what he's wearing on his actual body. It makes me feel like Drake is, you know, becoming his own man, kind of like Grayson when he became Nightwing. But those wings, that's just taking a gimmick too far. That's just one step short of adding a helmet with a beak on it. That works for the Hawkman. That works for Blue Falcon. That doesn't work for Red Robin. Hey, maybe the storyline was great. I don't know. I can only look at this figure and remember seeing this costume and thinking, no, I don't like that. In fact, I'd kind of like to see a two-tone cape. Maybe black on the outside, red on the inside, yellow on the inside. Yellow cape seems too Robin-ish. Maybe a full-on black cape, full-on red. I don't know. He's not trying to be Robin. He's trying to be Red Robin. It looks like there's going to be more options on the... I can't help it. Yum. You say Red Robin, your brain screams. Yum. Woo! I feel so much better. Get that off my chest. I know it's silly. I know it's predictable. Had to be done. Yum. It looks like there's going to be more options for the Batman soon. And I say it like that. The Batman. Because I want you to know it's the 2022 movie. And I say 2022 in case you're watching this in... 2030, 2035, the earth is a smoldering husk. You're looking for any form of entertainment and you unfortunately landed here. I apologize. Bandai has announced an upcoming SH Figure Arts version. So dark, so mysterious, just like the movie. In fact, <laughs> it would have been funny if they just had a blank picture with footstep, footstep. I guess the onomatopoeia would be from what I can see, it looks nice, but given the past few Batmans or SH figure arts with the plainness to the paint and the smaller size, but yeah, I need to see this in the light of day. Again, just like the movie. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see more pictures soon. I say hopefully, we're going to. There's no way around it. They're going to solicit this at some point in the near future. Mattel went on a Masters of the Universe Masterverse tear this week, and hey, I'm all for it. 
I don't have to go dig through pictures or some random Instagram account. They actually put out promotional images. Let's start with Skeletor because even though we've seen some skew from Revelation with what the new attorney of He-Man and Skeletor, the barbarian style, this goes even further. This is based on the Netflix kids show. I was gonna say animated or cartoon when Revelation is animated and a cartoon. So I don't mean anything negative about kids show. I'm just trying to differentiate the two. But it feels odd to slide into such a drastic design change and then keeping a lot of that aesthetic in the Masterverse version. And that also goes for the Netflix. You can't even say Netflix because they're both on Netflix. The kids show He-Man they showed too. It has the articulation and the kind of collector feel of Masterverse, but the proportions skew even further from what we've seen with the rest of the line. The little legs, the big torso, the super huge arms. <laughs> I guess the little heads would be Masterverse-y. But we swerve back into the Masterverse lane with Battle Armor He-Man. And I like this because it's not just a new overlay on the torso. It changes a lot of things up. They added armor to the abs. There's the hip plates. There's the different weapons with the cool looking shield. And then the head has the long hair and beard. I'm always down for a figure with a beard. I wonder if this will be like the Barbarian and give us a traditional head along with it, just to give you some classic flavor if that's what you're looking for. Beastman feels kind of deluxe with that hairy harness with the spikes and then a headdress, but I gotta wonder if that loincloth comes off. You know, to go along with that, I guess maybe pre-time jump. Well, it's been a while since I've seen the adult series, which makes that sound bad. Did he have the loincloth or was it just kind of the filmation updated? Speaking of classic looks, there's also Catra and She-Ra. Oh man, <laughs> this is just masterverse versions of the designs that we've seen for years and years. I especially like that masked head for She-Ra. That's pretty sweet. Just old school design squeezed through the masterverse filter. Jitsu's another classic design with modern flair like the hip armor and the mask, but... Does his chopping hand seem kind of small? Fisto got a mega fist of fisting, but Jitsu just kind of got a normal, just slightly bigger, I guess, the normal hand covered in gold. I'm not too familiar with Sun Man, but this is a good looking character design, especially in Masterverse. Are those actual swivels up on the wings? Mm -hmm. But I think my favorite is Hordak. And I, it's weird to say that because Hordak was never my favorite as a kid, but through the years, I've grown to appreciate his design a lot more. If nothing else, and more than anything, I guess, the oversized noggin makes the Masterverse body feel more proportionate overall. And with those extras, I think he's gonna be a higher price point. No release info yet, should be soon though. Super 7 has finally revealed their Toho Ultimate Wave 1, and mm, I can't get a read on the community. I mean, I see the usual, yes, I like them, I will buy them, and the, no, I do not like them, I will not buy them, and then the arguing for days about it, about who's right, and no, they're good, no, they're bad. Oh, hello, I've never seen you in this light before. But I'm not a big Godzilla guy, so I don't know what the hardcores are saying. Me, I look at them and think, well, that looks like the posters I have seen of Godzilla and Biolante. Biolante? Biolante. Hell, I'm from Backwoods, Arkansas. This is Godzilla and Violet. It's the king of the monsters and a killer plant. Looks good to me. And yeah, sure, there's versions out there from different companies, but this is Super 7's take. If you're into it, you're into it. Buy them. If you're not, go buy the other stuff. <laughs> more toys for more people. That's what it comes down to. $85 a piece, due out winter 2022. Last week we talked about the... Oh, I gotta do it again. The Fure Planet Series Wave 1 Wilderness Hunter Crocker in all of its crocodile jeans wearing glory. That makes it sound like he's wearing crocodile jeans, but no, it's, it's a crocodile wearing jeans. That is glorious. I pre-ordered. I'm in. Completely. I'm ready. What I wasn't ready for was for Big Bad Toy Store to announce their exclusive version less than a week later. Same figure, same sculpt, same accessories, different color scheme. There's a deeper green to the skin tone, along with black jeans, black hat, and then a reddish pinkish vest. I like this too, <laughs> why? Just look at the fade from the heavier scales on the back to the lighter shade on the underbelly. It's, it's kind of cartoony, but ooh, still realistic. I'm not sure if the $100 bills tampoed on the back is a reference to something though. This pulls it even further away from the, you know, the leather head and the killer croc comparisons. Although I have seen people talking about buying both, swapping the gear and giving themselves more of a leather head look. 
and then the other one's Killer Croc. But that's on y'all. That's not the company. There's just options available. And now to make the hard decision of which one? The darker? The lighter? Both? <laughs> Yeah, $90 scheduled for quarter three of this year. A Marvel Legends tidbit this week. Amazon posted up their exclusive two-pack with Silk and Dr. Octopus. Slight changes to Doc Ock with the face not being so teeth gritty. They closed that up, but still angry. They made the glasses blue instead of green and then brightened up the colors on the costume. This is a render though, so those colors may change slightly in production. It's also been confirmed that the tentacles are the same as the first release. They won't be bendy. For Silk, the body has been upgraded to the Shriek base with the pinvisible double elbows and then a new head with shorter hair. Dan also said that there will be alternate heads and hands, so I'm interested in seeing what's going on there. A re-release of Octavius, I can understand. We're coming right out of No Way Home. It's quick, easy product to get out there while they're hopefully working on MCU stuff, but I don't understand Silk. Is there some reason they're packed together other than secondary market prices? Both of these, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars, just depending on what auctions you look at. So the 55 dollars for this pack stings because it's rising prices again, but then it's also cheaper than either figure on eBay at the moment. This is good for newer collectors just jumping in, don't have these two characters. Bad for older collectors that may just want to upgrade one or the other. And I didn't actually see the ship date on this because I didn't catch it before it sold out. So it'll come in the future. Hasbro also held their Star Wars fan celebration this week, giving different fan sites exclusive reveals of upcoming Black Series figures. Well, exclusive. They spread two figures between seven sites, at least when it comes to six inch scale. Bosk's Bounty, Fanta Tracks, and at Star Wars The Black Series showed off the GameStop Gaming Grades Republic Commando Fixer. Yeah, I read that. Shut the hell up. I'm not big on the old Republic Commando, but I can see why people are talking about this being inaccurate. It's not as bulky, it's not as dirty, it's not as gritty. But even though they advertise it as the gaming greats, this is actually based on the Bad Batch appearance of Republic Commandos. That's why this is reuse of the Bad Batch bodies. Although, they could have just sculpted the gaming Republic Commando and had four trips back to the well on deck, ready. Here's this. You're going to get reuse out of this body. Then again, it's exclusive. It's GameStop. They're looking for cheap, easy repaints. The green is striking, though. Speaking of more trooper reuse, from Forlom to Zuckus, Fly Guy, Star Wars Action News, and Guerrero Stellari got a reveal of the GameStop Gaming Greats Jedi Fallen Order 13th Battalion Clone Trooper. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I will never turn down a clone variant, especially when it's on that new body. Some may gripe, but... These are canon. That's the way the movies and the cartoons and the games are set up. They're clone troopers. They have different markings. I like getting them in action figure form. The big Borat V pointing at the crotch kind of throws me, but hey, I'm still in for it. When these were announced at the same time for the same outlet, I thought, oh, at least I get to save on postage. That'll kind of ease the pain of rising exclusive prices, but Nope. The release dates on these two figures are actually a month apart, negating free shipping on GameStop.com. I see you. $28 each. The 13th Battalion is next March. Fixer is next April. Just when you think Bandai is out of the Star Wars model kit business, they toss a couple of new releases out, just keeping us on the hook. They were quiet for a good long while, and then boom. Two versions of Din Djarin. This week, it's Boba Fett in his repainted armor from Mandalorian Season 2 and then Grogu. For Fett and, well, I guess the Mandalorian, part of me thinks that they put these out because there's slight reuse from the older Boba Fett model kit. The Mando kit had repurposed sprues and this helmet looks the same as the other model kit. Maybe the chest armor? I don't know. We'll see. But then I come back down to reality and realize Mando and Boba Fett headline their own series current star wars media so of course if they're going to release a model kit they're going to do the two big stars the baggy pants are kind of soft and plasticky but that's par for the course with the model kits you have to put in the extra work you have to throw some paint down at least they're showing the base model kits here or at least the renders of the base model kits back in the day previous releases they'd have a professional painter spruce them up for promotional images and you'd think Man, that's pretty. I'm going to get that. And then open it up, build it, and go, ah, that's kind of plain. I still got a lot of work to do. Again, model kit. Overall, though, seems nicely proportioned. And even with the lack of paint, 
it matches that clean look from the show. Even the sculpt of the unmasked head looks fairly accurate. Keep in mind, the model kits do skew slightly larger than your Black Series, your figure arts. And that's definitely the case for the Grogu kit because it's actually a quarter scale figure. It's like the old Yoda model kit where there was a quarter scale prequel version and then a 112th scale empire version that's essentially a little statue and see what i was saying about the pretty painted promotional images compared to what you actually get out of the box model kit elbow grease you know elbow grease some nifty alternate faces for the big figure though with the frog out of the mouth and the <gasps> at the end of the day uh, we've gotten quite a few grogus from different outlets so i think i'm gonna pass on that kit for Boba Fett, I'm going to grab it because I'm a sucker. Not only because it's Boba Fett, but there's the thrill of the model kit that I haven't experienced in a while. I'm, I'm itching to do some sprue cutting, do some pushing together, some snapping. Or if nothing else, I can use this for custom. Spruce up other action figures. I haven't actually seen pre-orders for this up yet, except for the Ami Ami Japan site. I haven't seen any import companies that are actually shipping to the U.S. But if this is like the Mando kits, they'll show up at Hobby Lobby and other hobby stores. Hell, I think I saw them at Target. MSRP is $33 for Boba, uh, $23 for Grogu, and they're scheduled for July. And that is it for this week, maybe. I doubt it. I, I miss the NECA holothon. If there was anything there, we'll swing back around next week. <laughs> Just in time to miss next Friday's holothon. If you're interested in seeing any of these pictures up close without me all yum, I'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. And yeah, like I said, some of the reveals from the big boys this week, nothing too earth shattering. More reuse, more repaints, more Batmans. I'm actually finding myself more excited about the unknowns the new lines, the one-offs, the original concepts, the surprises. And don't you dare mistake me. I still love my Legends, I still love my Black series, but to be honest, I'm most excited about Crocker this past couple of weeks. And I just came out of a play day saying that the Felix Toys, definitely not, absolutely not, Rorschach, maybe one of my favorite toys of the year. Something different, something unexpected from a lesser known company. How will it hold up? Will the factory paint look like the prototype? What's the range of motion? How will it look on the shelf with other lines? There's an uncertainty, a, a sense of danger. Sometimes you wanna strap on the life preserver, jump in the boat, have a nice leisurely ride. There's nothing wrong with that. That sounds like a beautiful day. But sometimes you wanna jump head first off that big old cliff and hope that the water's deep enough. I like column A and I like column B. This week, it's a little bit more from column B than column A. That's all I'm trying to say, I guess. If you enjoyed this Whoosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com, wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Whoosh. So what do you want to talk about? What do we got? I, I feel like <laughs> I've put it all out there. I've got a new uh, intro coming, the first version. They kind of went YouTube-y with it. It has the whoosh, subscribe, and then website, and slam that good thing. Yeah, I just want whoosh. That's 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 all I'm looking for. So hopefully that'll come back around soon. Oh, what else? Oh, remember when I got the Figure Arts repainted version of Boba Fett? And I was like, man, I feel like I never need another version of this. Well, I got the Black Series. We'll probably take a look at that next week, do some comparisons, because I can't help myself. It's, it's Boba Fett. It's Star Wars. I have a problem. <laughs>